Hey everyone and welcome back to the garden. It's a bit late on doing this video. Today I've had a day off work and it's been the first day of actual real sun, which is probably why I'm a bit red, why I'm dressed like a child and why I've already got a bit of a farmer tan on the go. But I still wanted to do a video today and today's video is all about growing tree ferns in containers. So in my last video, you'll have seen me plant this tree fern here. Now I want to talk about what you can do if you want to grow a tree fern in a container. And simply put, if you're asking the question, can you grow a tree fern in a container? The answer is yes. Do I think it's best for long-term growing or for optimal health? Probably not. But I want to talk today a few details why I think that, and also how you can give your tree fern the best care possible if you are growing it in a pot. But before I say any more, happy birthday to my good friend Sean Gini, who I know watches every single video that I put out. So happy birthday, have a great day today. Watch this video again in future years, and this is a present that will keep on giving. If nothing else, you know a lot about growing tree ferns in pots and containers. So with this video, I'll try and keep it to the point and give you some really helpful tips on how you can grow a tree fern in a pot or container. Inside, there's Friends Reunion on, so what I've done is i put the lens on that will let me keep filming outside hopefully till 10 o'clock, so if I have to do it, I absolutely will. But first off then, tree ferns. It's a myth that they don't need any compost or soil. And if you haven't watched my other video yet on tree fern care, you should check that one out. I've got loads of tips on how to grow tree ferns, water them, feed them, and winter protection. Check that video out first, come back to this one, and there'll be some excellent tips to to follow on from that. So you might have seen in my previous video that we actually brought all the tree ferns here, apart from the one that I bought recently, they all came from our old house. Some of those I had planted in the ground and some have been in pots containers for between three and five years. So I have got a bit of experience of growing them in pots of containers and I know a few tips that you can do to keep them as healthy as possible. But ultimately, I don't think tree ferns are suitable for being in pots containers for long term. And by long term, I mean really five plus years. I know with regular care, and I literally did water my tree ferns every single day, all the ones that are in pots, when it didn't rain. So I gave them plenty of water, and I started off with all the tips I'm going to give you today. Ultimately, by the end of that four or five year period, the ones that I'd had in pots the longest, you can see where the trunk is starting to narrow a little bit, and that crown is starting to shrink. I'm sure they'll be absolutely fine now they're in the ground, but what that suggests to me is that the plants that really, they're not going to like being in a pot for long term. And whilst not many plants actually like being in pots, others, more Mediterranean plants and slow growing plants, they definitely tolerate it a bit better. So if you're buying a tree fern as a trunk, you're buying a tree fern that's been growing in say Tasmania, in some forest or woodland environment with high humidity, high rainfall presumably, and it's got that sort of nice trunk width because of those conditions, it's absolutely thrived in them. So basically they chainsaw them off at ground level, they chop all the fronds off, ship them over to the UK, and then we plant them in our gardens. And that plant, its first reaction is just to grow. And if it's in the ground, then it will slowly, hopefully, get back to its former glory. It might never be quite as big as it was over in Tasmania, because we can't offer the same conditions. But if it's in the ground, it has a fighting chance. With right watering and the right soil, you might get pretty close to it. And if you've seen the ones down in Cornwall, at Treba, at Heligan, some of them are absolutely massive. Now, if you look at tree ferns that are kept in pots, the root system can't be anywhere near that size. They're restricted. So because of that, I think you're always gonna struggle if you buy a trunk that's maybe a chunky trunk like that, you're really gonna struggle to have a tree fern that actually puts out big fronds and it can keep that same trunk width going if its root system's restricted. In some ways, it's like a bonsai tree. Because it's in a small pot, because it doesn't have that sort of access to nutrients, to moisture, to fresh soil, it's gonna restrict the growth. The leaves or the fronds might be smaller and it's never gonna grow as quickly or as well. That's, you know, that's to be blunt about it, but it is the honest truth. I think you can get away with growing tree ferns in pots for a few years, but beyond that point, you might start to see things growing downhill. So what I would say is, if there's an option to plant a tree fern in the ground, if there's any way you can juggle it around, then I would absolutely go for it. Now the reason that I say three years, if you look back at this photo, that's one of the eight foot tree ferns that I brought from the house. It had been in that pot, which is a 160 litre pot, for just over three years, and it had completely filled it with roots. So by that point, obviously it's gonna to struggle to get additional moisture, those roots can't go any further, they'll probably exhausted all the nutrients in the compost, and it was high time it was actually planted out. And it wasn't just the big trunks, even the trunks that are maybe a foot tall, they can fill a 50 or a 70 litre pot in the same time. So I'm not trying to be negative, and if you just got a tree fern, 
By the way, I did see the ones that the pine tree company sold. They looked absolutely amazing. Some of the chunkiest tree ferns that I've ever seen. And I was so close, literally so close, to ordering a seven or eight footer for the garden here. But I just can't justify it this year. We've got the greenhouse coming up later in the year. And then I might need to spend some money getting the fire pit sorted. But yeah, we'll see. It's one of those things. You can't spend all your budget on plants, unfortunately. Now, before I get carried away, I do completely get why some of you might want to grow tree fern in a pot. For some people, it might be the only option. I know at our old house, a lot of the garden was paved over. We knew we weren't going to live there forever. So growing in pots was our only real way, or my only way, of keeping these plants till eventually we're able to move to a house like we have done with a bigger garden. And if you've got a rental house, if you've only got a very small garden or even a balcony, I completely understand why you'd want to grow a tree fern and why growing it in a pot might be the only way. So hopefully the tips later on in this video will help you make up your mind and hope that tree fern be as healthy as possible whilst it's potted. So firstly, a quick look at the positives of growing in pots before you all think I'm being too negative. So firstly, if you grow plants in a pot, you can move it around. So that means if it's a really cold winter, you can put that tree fern into your garage, into a shed, or even bring it into a sheltered corner near the house, and it'll be protected from the worst of the weather. So that's absolutely great. And secondly, with tree ferns, they obviously grow so slowly, and they're really expensive per foot of height. So I can understand why you'd want to use a pot to prop it up and sort of artificially give it a bit more height. I completely understand that. And thirdly, they're such amazing plants. I can completely understand why you want to use a pot that complements it well, and that way you can have your tree fern right up close to your patio or where you spend the most time outside. I get the convenience and the attractiveness of pots. There's definite practical advantages too. If you've got a garden though the soil is maybe really dry and sandy, obviously a tree fern wouldn't thrive in that environment. So by growing it in a pot, you can give it a soil or compost mix that's more appropriate for its needs. But anyway, there are some downsides to growing in pots and containers. And the first one, which I've already touched on, there's only a limited supply of soil in that pot. Now that has a few sort of effects on the plant's growth. Firstly, that plant will get through the nutrients in that soil pretty quickly. So you're gonna have to be more on top of your feeding over time. And because there's a small volume of soil, it also dries out a lot quicker. And that's made worse by the fact that a pot attracts all the heat during the day, it soaks it in, and that dries out that compost or soil even quicker. So not only do you need to be on top of your feeding, but also your watering. And with a plant like a tree fern, that ideally, I'm not saying they have to be watered every day, but ideally they need plenty of regular moisture and humidity, that's gonna be even harder to create in a pot. And even if you water them every single day, it might not be absolutely enough. So it's one of those things, I think you need to consider that tree ferns, because they're more of a woodland and forest plant, they're probably literally one of the most hardest plants to grow in a pot, compared to something which maybe grows in a more arid environment, like a slow growing Mediterranean palm, Something like that will probably tolerate pot culture a lot better than a plant that has real need for high humidity, for regular moisture and good rich soil. I think another thing is it's all right saying you can just move that pot somewhere close to your house or somewhere sheltered when it's cold in winter, but actually doing that might be a different matter, especially if you've got a really heavy pot, that coupled with wet soil and a tall tree fern trunk, it's gonna be very heavy. Believe me, I know, some of the ones that I planted out here were eight foot trunks in 160 litre pots, and they were very, very heavy. You wouldn't want to be doing that a couple of times a winter, definitely not. And there's also the practical risk of that pot freezing through. So plants that are hardy, when you grow them in pots, they might not be as hardy. And for plants that might be more borderline in your area like tree ferns, which in theory can take dips down to minus eight, minus 10, maybe a touch lower for short periods, you put that same plant in a pot and it's more likely to suffer damage. And that's purely because that pot can freeze through quicker. And basically just a very small volume of compost and it can freeze solid, even if it just dips below freezing for a few days, it's not gonna kill your tree fern necessarily, but it won't like it. Whereas that same plant in the ground, its roots are more insulated and it'll be a tougher plant with a bigger root system that's able to cope with periods of drought, periods of cold and periods of heat in summer better. So if that's broken down the thinking behind my opinion that you can't really grow tree ferns in pots for long term. And when I say tree ferns, I'm mainly talking about Dixonia Antarctica. I know a lot of people grow Cyathes in pots because they're not hardy. I've got a couple of Cyathes here. I've got a Medullaris that I've planted out and that will need winter protection every winter. I've also got a Brownie eye which I will be keeping in a pot and maybe root pruning to keep it in that pot long term. But that's a plant that I've grown from small. I bought it as a very small plant and it's always been used to pot culture. So it's not the same as buying a Dixonia plant that's maybe 50, 100, 200 years old and then expect it to grow in those conditions. Max, you just come out to join me, haven't you? Obviously boring him. 
So anyway, I think it's one of those things. If there's another plant that you can grow in a pot instead of a tree fern, maybe one of the Mediterranean palms that grow quite slowly and naturally have small leaves, I would absolutely go for that instead. But if you do want to grow a tree fern in a pot, ideally you've got a long-term plan to get it planted into the ground. So like us at our old house, we knew we weren't gonna be there forever, literally every time. We knew we weren't gonna be at that house forever, so there was a plan to plant it out in a few years. So I completely get, if that's your situation, if you're hoping that you're gonna to move to a house where you can plant it out soon, then you should absolutely go for it. So the next section is a few tips that I would use to keep that tree fern as happy and as healthy for as long a time as possible. It looks like I'm babysitting Max now, he's obviously bored of friends. So anyway, the first tip I would give when it comes to growing your tree fern in a pot is what pot you grow it in. So ideally, you want to choose a large pot. So even if you've got a tree fern that's maybe a foot of trunk, I would still go for a pot that's maybe 50 to 70 litre. Conventional wisdom is that if you get a plant in a pot, you pot it up one size at a time. Whereas I think tree ferns need that sort of room to put the roots down. And I would personally, I wouldn't go any smaller than 50 litre. If you've got a larger trunk, say four foot plus, I'll probably even look to 110, 130 or even 160 litre pot. The pot size has a few different advantages. So firstly, it obviously gives room for those tree fern roots to spread throughout that pot for several years. Secondly, it doesn't freeze through as quickly. Because you've got a larger pot, it doesn't freeze through as quickly, and also it doesn't dry out as quickly. So even if there's a day when you don't water that tree fern, hopefully the soil, the compost that's in the middle of that pot will stay wetter for longer. And the next thing is what kind of pot you use. So personally, I tend to use the black pots with handles on them. I would show you one now, but obviously I'm a bit busy holding Max. I actually sold quite a few recently and I had them in all kinds of sizes up to an absolutely giant one, but most of them were in the sort of 130 to 160 litre range. And a black pot like that, you can always decorate them. You can maybe put some uh, reed matting or bamboo canes around them. I'm sure you can jazz them up somehow. But a pot like that is so much better than a terracotta one because obviously you do want a pot that's got a good bit of weight to it. Let's put him down. You do want a pot that's got a good bit of weight to it because you don't want that tree fern blowing over. You want the good solid base. But if you ever want to move that tree fern and it's in a terracotta pot, it's going to be so heavy to move and there's a high chance you might actually end up breaking it, moving it. And it's not just a practical consideration for yourself, it's also better for the tree fern if you grow it in a plastic pot. Because plastic keeps the moisture in, whereas terracotta, it dries out so quickly. And my last pot or container tip, don't choose one that goes in at the top. And this is said from experience, I'm sure it's a mistake that many gardeners have made. But basically, if you choose a pot that starts off narrow, goes wide and comes back in at the top, that plant is basically locked in that pot. And with tree ferns, they put out such a dense mass of roots that will absolutely just fill that pot or container. They'll form the exact same shape and it'll be locked in there. The only way you'll get it out will be some serious hacking of the roots or smashing the pot, which obviously isn't great. So what I'll definitely say, whatever material you choose your pot, make sure it's got straight sides and you can get that plant out. And this isn't just a tip for tree ferns, it's the same for any kind of tropical plant, even any kind of plant. If you're planning to pot up again in future or plant out into your garden, you want to make sure that the sides are like that and it doesn't curve in at the top. So once you've picked out a pot then that's nice and big and won't dry out too quickly, the next thing is what are you gonna put in it? So personally, the first thing I would say is don't go for a peat-based multi-purpose compost. And there's obviously the, well, the obvious environmental implications with using peat, but there's also the practical ones as well. And peat-based compost, but don't last very long. The nutrients get used up pretty quickly, and they're usually used just for bedding plants, then sort of thrown away or put on the garden at the end of the year. They don't have the structure and the nutrients to keep a plant happy for any longer than a year, really. So I wouldn't use those. And the other thing is, as peat compost have been under pressure to introduce more sort of peat-free alternatives, you'll find that the blends are changing. And some of those, while I would usually say go for anything peat-free, they're not great for tree ferns either because they don't have the structure and they might dry out even quicker. So my advice for tree ferns will be ideally get something soil-based. So you might have heard me mention John in this number three. It's, it feels like a sort of garden soil in your hand rather than being a soft, light, fluffy compost and it might be just the same soil that's in your garden, but something like that, although it's heavy, it's got more of a structure for the tree ferns to get the roots into. But what you can do is actually add some organic matter to that. And when I say organic matter, you can buy bags of soil conditioner, farmyard manure, add some of that in. I can't give you an exact sort of ratio, but if I said 10 to 20%, somewhere around there, if you just dig a bit of that in, it'll add nutrients to that soil, that will last longer than six months to a year and it'll also break down and give better structure to that soil so it'll hold on to water better and the roots will be able to spread into it easier. 
I don't think it's impossible to grow tree ferns in a multi-purpose mix, but what I would say is just stress again, add some organic matter to it. So ideally, the absolute perfect answer would be if you compost at home and you've got some of that to add into it, that would be absolutely fantastic. But if you haven't, buy some soil conditioner, buy some farmyard manure and just dig that in at the time of planting. It won't smell beyond a few days and it will give that plant an extra boost to last even longer in that pot. So you've got your tree fern potted up. The next thing you need to do, and the most important thing going forwards, is the watering. So a tree fern that's in the garden, it might do well without periods of watering when it's not too hot in summer, but in a pot, it will need watering pretty much every day. And that might seem like a lot, but in reality, it's just a case of getting the hose and spraying it down for maybe 30 seconds. So it doesn't have to take ages. It's not scientific or complicated. Ideally, if you've got rainwater, if you've got a water butt and you've got a watering can, then slosh some that on it. But if you have to use water from a hose, any water is better than no water. So just go for it. And it's something you need to keep on top of in winter as well. So if you check out my other video, I talk about when to water in winter. But as a general rule, if it's not freezing, if there isn't a heavy frost forecast, and if it hasn't rained for a couple of days, in winter I tend to water my tree ferns maybe once or twice a week. Realistically, probably twice a week really. And if you keep on top of it then, you'll still get those decent fronds coming out in spring. So you've chosen the right container, you've got the right soil, you're watering your tree fern, the next thing you need to do is to feed that tree fern. And it's not something you need to do straight away, but you just need to be wary that although they're not heavy feeders and actually planted out in half decent soil, I've got most of mine planted out here in the middle section of the garden where the soil is quite moist and it's obviously quite a rich fertile soil. Somewhere like that, you generally don't really need to feed them. But if you're growing that same plant in a pot, like I mentioned earlier, it will exhaust the nutrients that are already in that soil or compost. Even with manure added, you still need to top up a bit. So whilst I don't usually recommend plant specific fertilizers, if you just bought a tree fern trunk, it might be worth getting some HSK tree fern feed. And I'll put a link to it in the description below. That, if you follow the instructions, you won't go far wrong. And it's basically just a top up feed that you give that plant through the summer months, just to help those fronds grow really strongly and help support next year's growth. If you don't want to use that, you might be able to use a liquid seaweed, which in itself is a very mild fertilizer. There's not a huge amount of nutrients in it. And if you dilute it further, then you're perfectly safe to give that to your tree ferns. I'd still water around the compost rather than going onto the actual crown, but you should be absolutely fine with it. I think it's important to remember that tree ferns, the woodlands or forest plants, and they don't need massive amounts of nutrients like bananas, cannas, any of those tropical plants that grow really huge leaves do. Tree ferns are like more of a gentle feed, something that's maybe slow release, and they won't like something like Miracle Grow poured on at full strength every single week. It won't produce the results you want, and if anything, you might create problems with a bit of an imbalance in that compost. So personally, I would definitely underdo it rather than overdo it, and if you stick to a specific tree fern feed, something like a liquid seaweed through the growing season, and also, probably the last thing I would say about feeding is, you can put stuff into the actual compost itself. So if you use chicken manure pellets, or something like a blood fish and bone, if you know you're not going to remember to actually feed that tree fern, or the other way around if you know you might water it or feed it a bit too much, I will probably spread some of those on the surface of the compost, or even mix them in at the time of planting. And that way you know that every time you water that tree fern, those nutrients will slowly drip through. And what you can do, if when you're planting a tree fern, if you leave a little bit of a gap, between the surface of the compost and the top of the pot, then what you can do in winter time or in late autumn is just spread a layer of that soil improver or farmyard manure just on the surface. And that'll do a couple of things. First, it'll help trap the moisture inside and it'll keep that tree fern moist for more of winter. And also those nutrients will slowly drip through for the following season. So that's definitely worth doing. So hopefully this video has given you a few things to think about and if you were planning to grow a tree fern in a pot but you've got the option of growing it in the ground then you should absolutely go for it in my opinion. And if you're struggling to maybe think about a design, you may be not as confident about that side of things, check out my other videos looking at designing my tropical garden basic series or grow that tree fern in a pot, get your design sorted and then plant it out next year. It's not something you need to rush into but hopefully the tips I've given you will help you keep your tree fern as happy as possible for as long as possible. Like always, if you've got any questions about anything I mentioned in this video, just leave me a comment below. But I'll see you soon. I've got a few videos coming up, planted up a shady border, and then another couple of random bits and pieces before hopefully in two or three weeks time, I'll give you my next garden tour. And at the minute, I'm not showing you much behind me in these videos to try to keep an element of surprise and secrecy, but hopefully enjoy the changes that I've made. I've been really busy and I'm really liking how the garden's looking. So hopefully see you all soon.